Hello, my name is Dr. Campbell Price and I'm the Curator of Egypt and Sudan here at the Manchester Museum. And I'm Dr. Joyce Tilsley and I teach Egyptology at Manchester University. We are here in the storerooms of uh, the museum today and this is where we keep a lot of objects which we don't have uh, space to display. Manchester Museum has a particularly large collection of wooden objects from the pyramid builders town of Cahun from the Middle Kingdom. Uh, Joyce, what do we know about Cahun? We know a lot more about Cahun than we know about other yeah. towns or villages because of the state of preservation of the things that were left behind by the villagers. Because it was a very dry environment, we get things like wood, which we don't normally find. So it's absolutely fascinating for us to be able to look at it and actually handle implements that ordinary Egyptians used. For example, we have, like here, artifacts yeah. to do with building. Yeah, that's fantastic. Very gnarled bit of, of wood. Um, used as a mallet. Yes, I mean you could use this today, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah. It's very, very similar to, to what's used. I like that uh, the, the handle really is buffed. Po polished. Polished yes. from the, 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 the handling. And it's a good weight. It's, right? it's it a effective. serious, serious weight behind it and very, very well used, clearly. Yeah, I mean we see things like this on tomb scenes quite often, but yeah. to actually be able to handle them and to see them in real life is a real treat for us. And as you say, it's, it's, it's heavy. Um, and it seems to have been kind of keyed on the side almost to make it a bit more uh, rough. Yeah, I mean, presumably this would have been a very valuable piece of equipment. It's, mm. it's, wood was quite scarce in ancient Egypt, good quality wood. And I think a craftsman would have really looked after his tools. It might even have been state owned, sure. although the fact that it was found in the village suggests that it wasn't. Yeah. Um, but a very important piece. Very nice. And we've also got implements to do with agriculture. Like yes. This piece here. This is one of these, um, the oh, winnowing, the winnowing chaff. shovel, yes. I think they're called. Yeah. A shovel to, to um, as you say, as is shown on uh, some of later, some later tomb scenes, um, workmen out in the fields uh, winnowing away uh, to get the, uh, separate the, the grain from the chaff. It's a, again, a nice piece that the excavator Flinders Petrie um, when he was excavating the town at the end of the 19th century. I think he was really delighted to get things which people used in their everyday lives. Absolutely. I mean, you can look at them on the, the tomb walls, but you always have a bit of doubt as mm. to whether they're exaggerating or whether they've been just put in there because it's what people hope life would be yeah. like rather than what, actually what it was like. So when we find something that matches pretty exactly to what we can see on a tomb wall, it, it's again, it's a real treat for us to see it. And finally, we have not an ancient object, but a replica Yes, which we're about to demonstrate. Yes, um, so this is a piece which is on display here in uh, Manchester Museum on the uh, gallery. Um, it's a fire making set. Shall we demonstrate how it how yes. it would work? I mean, making fire would have been very important. Yeah. Um, whether they would have kept a fire going pretty much continuously, I don't know. But you would always have to have the means of making a fire, and it wouldn't have been particularly easy to do. No. So what you have here at the bottom, you have a wooden slab, I suppose, yeah. which has got notches in it. And you can see where um, they've been used to light fires. Yeah. And then you have a stick. A stick, a fire-making I don't think it's got any technical case. name. Yeah. And ideally, you would have a cup that you'd put on the top the here. the top. That would, you would then hold. Mm -hmm. So you, you, in, in the, the real example from Cahoon, we have a, a stone uh, top which together um, writes one of the hieroglyphic signs for craft, which is quite nice. Um, and you would make a kind of motion like this with the bow, and presumably... You have to have some tinder down here. Yeah, if you get you enough tinder, tinder and you do it fast enough, you'll get a little bit oh. of smouldering. Yeah, and then um, hopefully a spark would... Yeah, and you start blowing it. I've seen it done in videos. It looks okay. quite easy in videos, but I'm sure in real life it is not that easy. But we can't obviously demonstrate it in any more detail because no. we're being in the museum. It yes. wouldn't be a good idea. Um, but, but visitors are often interested in these technologies, whether it's uh, stoneworking or uh, fire making, that give us that connection to the people who lived in uh, Cahoon 4,000 years ago. Put that down. If you're interested in uh, this material from this period, you can t check out more information on uh, this week's resources online.